can and do cut my own hair. Hey, what's up guys? T. Martin here. Uh, uh I, I mean Sovereign Gaming. So with the obligatory edgelord jokes out of the way, let's get down to what you need to know to get good at Reaper. Since video games are now officially a sport, equivalent to football or football, we can take some of the tricks of the trade from those sports and apply them here to get psyched up and ready for some Overwatch matches. Now the equivalent for this is called the keyboard crash. All you gotta do is slam the keyboard into your desk repeatedly at high speeds, but don't break your desk because you'll need that to play. But you can also do the mouse pad mallet, slap it across your face and get hype. Okay, once you've done that, you can get onto your computer. You're gonna need some sick tunes to keep you in the zone. Reaper works specifically well with beats that complement his style of play. His shotgun fires two times per second, so a beat per minute of 120 will fit right in. Okay, this sick beat will work great. But since we don't have to get into the zone right now, we can listen to some nice dark depressive ambient music. Next, get into a game and pick a Reaper. Now, since Reaper is kind of a villain in the lore, and even though he fights alongside the members of Overwatch in game, you want to constantly be expressing his torn conscience. Does he want to murder Winston one second or save him the next? We never know. So the best way to do this is to be very nice at the start and throughout the round to get madder and violenter. So basically, it's a normal game. Starting off with some kind and humbling words is always appreciated. Another nice thing to do is give some high fives to the enemy team at the start of the match to show your good sportsmanship. No silly, that high five comes later. Here, I guess I should go over Reaper's basic moves, abilities you might call them. His wraith form conveniently transforms him into an unstoppable tank at the touch of a button. Use this to move out of spawn faster and nothing else really. It's pretty much useless. His shadow step is definitely his best ability. Always have it ready to use so you can get the jump on any enemy that you come across. You can also use it to get out of sticky situations you might have gotten yourself into. If your Mercy or Anna can't heal you back up in time, it's their fault because as a healer main, oh crap, I shouldn't have said that. I know firsthand that it's 100% of the time sometimes my fault. His ultimate creates a flower in the air made of launched grenade thingies, or in game, a bunch of hit markers in a double helix pattern. I find this to be a deep yet menacing while also playful ability because of the way the subaqueous qualities of the negative space makes resonant the essentially transitional qualities of the death spewed forth from his inner being. No other force in nature demonstrates such brute strength, yet frailty, as the one Reaper unleashes when the centuplicate is reached and the key of Q is depressed. Truly, this ultimate is one of a kind in its ability to kill multiple people quickly, with only keen timing and positioning needed to pull it off. The best way to use it is either to jump from a tall building using the ult like a parachute to cushion your fall. You can go jump off a building to your painful death some other time, just not here in combat. Another great way to use it is to run right into the enemy team and press Q super fast so they don't have time to react to what you're about to do. Reaper also has a passive ability that lets him suck the blood from those he tickles. Oh sorry, it lets him gain accelerated healing. Uh, oh, it, it actually gives him Adderall to calm his nerves in combat. Just poke Winston or Roadhog like the pinatas they are and their return tickling won't be able to cause the slightest giggle. The best playstyle for Reaper is to use the wide spread of your shotguns to make sure you put some damage into every enemy player. This means that every time any of them die, you'll be guaranteed that the top circle of the scoreboard will be filled with a yellow, gooey substance. This means that you are doing a great job at DPS. And don't be afraid to shoot at enemies across the map. Your guns have a further range than you might expect. All you need to do is get a couple pellets into them for it to count when your team kills them. So go ahead and hit the pharaoh or whatnot. You can be assured that when the elimination cards keep popping up that you are hard countering their entire enemy team. Another aspect to keep in mind when playing Reaper is that he is wearing some pretty loud boots. 
If you ever want to prank the other team and yell boo behind them, or whatever a 56 year old angel of death does these days, you're gonna have to press Kirtle. Sorry, Katarl. One thing you have to worry about as Reaper is running out of guns in your pockets. See, unlike most characters in Overwatch, Reaper doesn't have as vast of a supply of ammo to work with unless he finds himself in an action movie on that particular day. No, he has to call forth a whole new set of guns each time he fires. This is definitely a better cop-out for impossible akimbo reloading than Infinity Ward came up with, but it does mean that Reaper will use up all of the available metal on the map much faster than his teammates, because they only have to bring forth new ammo, not a brand new hammer or handspike thingies. Because of this, you have to be a little more careful with how often you reload. This incidentally could help you be prepared for enemies who were trying to scare you from behind as well. The greatest threat of all to Reaper is his personal ally, Window Painter. She has a long range weapon, sort of like a shotgun, but it doesn't shoot pellets and goes much further. It'll outcompete you outside of close range, so stay away from her unlike the plague. But the number one tip I have to give you for Reaper is target prioritization. This changes depending on how much you hate your old Overwatch buddies on that particular day. Your best bet is to aim for the broadside of a barn, also known as an ultimate battery. Keep in mind that it's much easier to scare the smaller ones if you sneak up behind them, so you might want to say, go after the peaceful Robo Monk first. Pretty much just spook a couple of enemies and die peacefully. Or not. For Reaper, dying isn't as much of a big deal since he always comes back to life. And that's about all you need to know for Reaper to start harvesting that barley. I mean, uh, winning some games. Just get in the zone, train in the art of the spook, the scare, the spork, whatever you want to call it, get carried by your team, and you'll be top 500 in no time as Mercy. But for Reaper, I recommend switching to Genji or McCree. Fetch me their souls! Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind?